Hi everyone, it's Simon here with a review of Matchy Knight's Blood Bagos. This game I picked up on the Lunar Sale on the PlayStation Network store on Hong Kong, or in Hong Kong, sorry, and was a weird one because initially I was a bit like, uh, is that all it is? And then I found myself quickly coming back to it time and time again when I needed to kind of like brain dump my brain for a few minutes. And then I found myself weirdly sucked into this game. So I wanted to make a review just to let people know about it. Just in case you need one of those like brain out moments in gaming just to relax for a few minutes. This game is an arena hack and slash. You can play with one or two people and you pick a character, go into an arena and you kind of play as a robot or a man in a robot, I kind of guess. And you then have to smash up all the other robots or fill up and complete the objective that's in the bottom right hand corner. At the end of each level, and there's four difficulties per level, you will then gain some coins or some gems. Coins you can use to then upgrade your own HP, attack damage, whether or not, like the percentage of whether you could get a critical attack damage, and how much better that attack damage when you make a critical attack uh, it will be. And that's what you can use for your coins. For the gems that you collect, you'll be able to purchase um, like trunks of weapons and then you can pick the one that you want best for your playstyle and kind of sell off or merge your old ones into it so that you can kind of slowly upgrade stuff as you go along. That side of things works really, really well uh, and continues to kind of slowly chunk up and progress how you go through the game. The game itself has 60 levels across five different uh, like landscapey worlds and each time you get into a new world the same type of enemies upgrade with a different skin and slightly more harder uh, and more powerful weapons essentially and you'll basically be mindlessly smashing away trying to kill them all you've got three different attacks and the attacks are dependent on your weapons now when you start off the game it offers you three characters and they've all got the three different types of weapons but because it's all interchangeable I didn't really see any point in trying to like swap out playstyles I just got the weapon that I felt most comfortable with and ran with it. You'll have a light attack which uh, doesn't take away any of your stamina and in fact recharges your stamina. And then you'll have two heavier attacks which do take away your stamina. One of which you can pretty much put down to like a passive ability so it could be that it makes you more likely to do critical damage it could put up a shield or it could be like a circular range attack that kind of I don't know sets off fire damage for people that are around you or something like that there's a range of them to choose from and it's really dependent on the weapon that you've got the second attack is normally like a uh, big smash attack like a heavy or, or a ranged attack or it could be like a really really quick one or one that spins a very long way, or maybe like a, if you've got the lance on, it could be like a really long ranged prong that will give really big damage, but in a very small space, as opposed to like your just normal punch attack that you're doing beforehand. The beauty of uh, Match Unite's Blood Bagos is that you don't know what you're going to be doing until you pick up your weapon and have a go with it, and it will kind of lend itself to choosing what playstyle works for you and what one doesn't. Now, as you progress through the game, the currency increases, the amount of gems increases, so therefore you'll be upgrading as the enemies upgrade too. And because the game is purposefully quite slow, it doesn't feel like it's ever truly overwhelming you, but you really need to plan a little bit about what you're doing in advance. Not in terms of, I need to be strategic, but because the movement of you and all of the enemies is quite slow, you can kind of forecast where you're going to go and change quite early in your movements and what you're doing to react to where you can see the enemies are going. And each big move is telegraphed quite uh, well in advance. Where the game does fall down though, and there's a couple of points, firstly the frame rate dips quite a lot in the last few levels because there are so many enemies on screen and there's so much going on in terms of explosions. And that second point about explosions kind of feels like where the game wants its difficulty setting to be. Instead of just throwing loads and loads of complex enemies at you, which it does very early on and then just increases the numbers and increases their HP, so it becomes a bit of like a grinder for fest, uh, you'll end up having loads and loads of 
uh, robots kind of circling around the perimeter of your arenas, just firing missiles at you. And there's no way that you can avoid them. So it's like your HP is slowly being drained as you're going down each fight. And that just felt like a really cheap way of trying to make something artificially more difficult. And I found that quite frustrating in the end, that sometimes, um, particularly when there's one in the last level where it's just a giant foot comes down, and I kind of got some of the mechanics behind why it was coming down um, and where it was and how quickly it was, because it's tied to some of the enemies and where your placement is. But it just felt extra cheap that you do that and move out of the way, but sometimes you just end up in a position where you're just going to die anyway because you can't get away in time because your character is so slow. That being said, though, there is no real penalty for dying. You get to keep hold of the cash and the gems that you've collected. It's just that when you complete a level, some of your other, like, uh, how much time you've got left kind of turns into a multiplier and will, like, make it much more of a bountiful bounty at the end. So, yeah, I just found this game strangely satisfying. Is it top tier? No. Would I be like, oh, you've got to play this game? Absolutely not. But I think where I've... So I was playing this game when I was really quite unwell. And so it was pretty much all of my, what I, my brain could deal with <laughs> at the time. So maybe it is just like the perfect I'm half asleep game and you can just button mash and not really pay too much attention to it. And that like increases um, how good it is. I'm not entirely sure. But I was pleasantly surprised with what I came away with of the game versus what the game is actually about. So yeah, maybe it's a mild hidden gem, who knows. Match Unites Blood Bagos is out now. It is available in other territories. It just seems to always be on sale in the Hong Kong store. So that's why I got it. Um, so yeah, any comments or questions, please leave them down below. And uh, hopefully I'll catch you in another video on Higher Plane Games. Bye for now. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network a collection of media projects ran by me. If you like what you see and want to find out more, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support can make so much more possible, be that a like, a comment, a share or a pledge. Thanks for watching.